G'day YouTubers, Pirate Pete here, coming to you from a pretty mild Sunday afternoon, heading in towards the evening um, from uh, from Sydney, as you can see in the backdrop there, to talk about gold and silver. Now, I'll start off this video here. I've got a cute little treasure here I'll share with you. It was a 2004 one ounce silver proof kookaburra that I've uh, picked up on my adventures. Um, there's only about 1,400, a little over 1,400 of these made by the Perth Mint and issued by the Perth Mint, so it's, it's quite a rare coin. And uh, I did find it at a good price, so I did grab it and uh, added it into my proof collection. Now, today's video, I've got a couple of other things I want to share with you, so stick around for it. I've got um, my bullion buying strategy and also my trading strategy. So hang around, check it out, and uh, let me know what you think. Alrighty, so in the next couple of sections here, I'm going to share uh, a couple of strategies with you. Um, there's there's a lot of content um, in each of these strategies, so I'll uh, I'll do my best to walk you through each one of them. So this first one up here we're looking at is my bullion buying strategy, um, and I'm I'm sort of developed this for the foreseeable future, so for the rest of 2015 and 2016. Now, there's a lot of concepts on this slide here, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll step through each concept one at a time and uh, bring you up to speed with what my, my buying strategy actually looks like. Alrighty, so to begin, I've got uh, in this first slide spot silver um, price presented in US dollars per ounce uh, for the last five years, so nothing tricky here. I'm sure you've all seen this a thousand times before. Now, um, after a bit of a bull run between 2010 and 2011, it's just been in a downward trend, obviously with a few whipsaws up and down, but uh, a general downtrend emerged. Now, uh, no way to predict where that's going to end, no way to know if it's going to end anytime soon or sometime into the future, so I don't, I don't even try to guess where that's going. In this second slide here, I just want to introduce... Um, a couple of ideas that I've got. One is um, shown in red there at the bottom, the red bar. It is of absolute zero. So um, silver spot price absolutely ends at zero. It doesn't go into negative territory. It finishes at zero. Therefore, the lowest this chart could drop to, in theory only anyway, would be zero. Can't go lower. Uh, that's pretty useful to know when building a strategy that you do have a constant um, because... Um, there's so many variables in the markets, we can build up a strategy knowing that it can't go below zero, and I'll show you later how I do that. Now, the second concept here I want to introduce is relative zero. Now, relative zero is a bit of an expansion on that. It's taking in the idea that for a silver miner, they've got costs associated with producing silver. We often talk about it in, in terms of cash costs, the operating costs of producing the silver. And those, those costs effectively equate to a different zero for those mining, producing, mining producers. So uh, where, where that relative zero actually extends to is open for debate. Some, some, some think the cash costs are as high as 20 an ounce. Uh, others say they're quite low, as low as 5 an ounce. Um, I've looked at the history of, uh, of mining production. I've looked at the most recent history of mining production in the last five years. It's, it's looking to me as though it's around about $7, $8 an ounce. Hard to know for sure, but uh, if you do want to check out my analysis of it, I've got a few videos looking at the uh, top 15 mining producers around the world. Um, have a look at that, form your own opinion, but uh, I've drawn it in that the relative um, zero for mining producers sits between zero and, and $8 an ounce. All right, so in this, in this next slide here, I'm introducing what I call my buying zones. So um, I'll start with um, the red dotted line. So the red dotted line is basically saying this is the point at which I'm going to start to buy silver. So when the spot price falls under that red line, it's in my buying zones and I'm going to start buying. If it pops above that red line, I'll stop buying and I'll just sit and hold what I have. Okay, so... My buying zones, I've broken into three. Now, the reason why I've broken them into three is because what I'm trying to do is allow for the fact that I can't tell you where the bottom of the market is. I don't know where this will stop falling. 
And what I want to do is I want to accelerate my buying the more it falls. So when it enters into buying zone one, I'm only going to pour 15% of my maximum amount, um, cash amount, into buying zone one. So while it remains in zone one, I'm only going to invest 15% of my maximum bank for this. If it's to fall down into buying zone two, I'll invest another 35% of my bank into buying silver. All right, so I've accelerated um, the amount that I will buy if it enters into buying zone two. You can sort of see that. I've tried to illustrate that graphically as well. Now, buying zone three, as I said, buying zone three, I've tried to align it where I believe relative zero sits. And you can see I'm accelerating again my buying. If it hits into that region, I'm buying up the, the last 50% of my bank um, in silver. So in total equals 100%. When it hits zero, I'm 100% invested. It can't go below zero. I can't get wiped out. The maximum at risk is 100% that I'm prepared to risk in silver. So that's, that's really the, the crux of this strategy here. Um, I'm managing my risk because I've already predetermined how much I'm going to invest in total and how I'm going to spread that investment at different price points and I'm accelerating my purchase the more it falls. The reason being that the more it falls, the higher it will climb afterwards and my maximum holdings will be more profitable in the process. Okay. Now when it comes to um, the bank that I'm talking about, the cash that I want to invest in this. I'm not talking about I'm putting my total wealth in this. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm diversified as a portfolio. I've got shares, I've got property, I've got a car, I've got cash in the bank, I've also got future income, I've got other assets. I'm not putting all of it on silver. What I've done is out of that total wealth, I've allocated a percentage of it into silver. So a percentage of my wealth has been allocated for the acquisition of silver. So where I'm talking about 15% of max, I'm talking about 15% of my silver allocation. Where I'm talking 35% of max, I'm talking about 35% of my silver allocation, etc, etc. So therefore, I've isolated the maximum amount I'm going to expose to silver. The only risk I'm taking here is that the price will, um, if you like, fall so far that it takes or absorbs a lot of my silver allocation and then never moves. That's the only risk I've got and that's the risk I'm accepting. That's the risk I'm looking to make a return on. I think that's a, an acceptable risk for the type of return I'm looking to make. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take you into what, what is my trading strategy and my trading strategy exists um, largely because um, I want to make sure that I still make money even if um, silver stays low for long. It, it could do it for years, it could do it for decades and I don't want it just sitting there doing nothing. I still want to make some money from it. I can't earn rent, I can't earn interest, I have to make a profit by trading silver um, while I'm holding it. Um, so essentially I need to buy low, sell high to do that. And I'm going to share with you my trading strategy um, as it aligns uh, with my buying strategy, my bullion buying strategy. So uh, once again, a lot of concepts on this slide here. Um, what I'll do is I'll walk you through each one, one at a time. All right, so here we are once again. I've just drawn absolute zero, relative uh, zero um, from the previous strategy. I've added in the buying zones, one, two, and three, same as in the previous strategy. Percentage allocations 15, 35, and 50%. Now, what I'm introducing in here, some dotted lines in those buying zones. These are my buy sell triggers. Okay, each one is like a rung on a ladder. Okay, so each one, when the spot price hits one of those rungs, it triggers an action. If it's if the price is coming down, it triggers a buy action. If the price spot price is going back up and it hits a rung, it's going to trigger a sell action, okay? So what I'll do is I'll elaborate on that a little bit more. So remember I talked about I've got a total silver allocation, so I had total wealth, all my assets. A portion of that was my silver allocation. 
Okay, here I'm representing that as total, sil total silver allocation. What I'm doing with my total silver allocation is I'm allowing a percentage of that to be used for trading, okay, with these buy-sell triggers. So it's a subset of a subset. Um, the reason why I'm doing a subset of my total silver allocation is because fundamentally I'm interested in investing in silver for the long term as an alternative to holding cash. So therefore, I don't want to trade away all my silver. I just want to have a small percentage of my silver used for trading purposes with the objective that the profits from that trading will pay off, if you like, return a, an equivalent of a, of a dividend or a rent for holding all of that physical silver. So that's the reason why I'm trading a percentage of it, okay? Now, I've put in here an example of spot price movement over time. You can put anything you want in here, the strategy is going to hold, it's going to still be valid. Um, doesn't matter what scenario you try and put in, um, the strategy still accounts for it because essentially the price can only do one of three things. It can go down, it can go up, or it can go unchanged. It can't do anything else and the strategy is designed to account for those three variables. Now, uh, what I've done here for illustration purposes is I've randomly selected uh, real data from the spot price of silver somewhere in its history. Um, it's literally random. I don't even know where I grabbed it from, but I just grabbed it, plotted it into a chart um, and added it here so that I could explain my concept for you. All right, so these buy sold triggers, um, think of them as rungs on a ladder. So what I've got is when the spot price, it, it falls and it falls from one level down to another level and it hits one of those rungs that's triggering a buy action, okay? If it keeps falling and it falls all the way down to another rung, it's gonna trigger another buy action. So I would have bought more silver just at a lower price. Um, if it keeps on falling, I keep buying. And if it falls all the way down to zero, I keep buying all the way down to zero. Now, if it reverses and starts to climb somewhere um, before it hits zero, um, and it climbs above where I bought it from and it hits one of those rungs, I then sell it and I sell it at a profit. So I would have bought low and sold high, okay? Now, this, this example is just trying to illustrate that if it, if it has a bit of a run or if it just goes sideways or if it uh, you know goes in a big sell-off, it's gonna hit these rungs a fair few times. And this could go on for years and decades, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be scalping these profits over time and those profits are going to add up to being you know, uh, worthwhile because I've already calculated this. I've already worked out my percentages um, that I've got invested in the trade and I know that it's going to be enough um, based on the volatility of the, um, of the market. Um, now, I won't get too much into the financial mathematics of it. If you are interested in it, uh, look at some of these um, um, measures of volatility, but um, the, beat, the beta is a good one. Uh, it's one that I use. I won't go into it in this uh, video. It's a bit too complex for this video to talk about the financial um, mathematics of it all. But um, the, the more volatile this market is, um, that's going to determine how much I space out my, my buy-sell triggers. And, um, and, and my percentage silver allocation for trading is also gonna be affected by um, the volatility of the market. So um, I'm basically guaranteeing myself profits here as long as silver doesn't just sit at one price literally forever. I'm gonna make money, all right? Now, those profits that I make in my trade I'm just simply going to add it into my total wealth. My total wealth over time will continue to grow from this and other investments. And as my total wealth grows, a percentage of, of that total wealth has been predetermined to be available for silver. Therefore, my total silver allocation bag grows as my total wealth grows. So as my total silver allocation grows, that means that um, the percentage that is available for my trading allocation will also grow and it becomes the virtuous circles of wealth creation. So this, this here is part of my strategy of wealth creation. It's one that I've adopted from 
I, I guess I've been trading in the markets for over a decade now. So I'm very new to gold and silver collecting in the physical form, but I've got a fair bit of experience in trading financial instruments. This year is a modification of, of those strategies that I've used successfully in, in the financial markets. And I just wanted to share that with you folks here, I think. I've seen a lot of videos sort of debating about whether this is the bottom of the silver price or whether it's got more to fall. And I, I sort of thought I'd share this strategy with you who maybe don't want to try and crystal ball the future. Um, there are ways to profit um, from, from the market just based on how volatile the market is. Uh, this is one of those strategies that I'm using. Um, now, the other thing I'll, I'll just say at this point, that when it comes to strategies in trading, one thing I've learned, there's, a, there's 101,000 different strategies and they're all valid in the right circumstance. Um, but the thing that I've learned is you've really got to pick a strategy that works for you and your personality. So if you're somebody who's uncomfortable um, sitting on a paper loss, um, then you know this strategy is probably not going to work for you. Um, if you're somebody like me where you've already predetermined your maximum risk exposure levels, uh, you know that you can't go bust with this strategy. The math has already been done. I sleep really well at night, doesn't matter how much I've invested in the market, I've already done my calculations. I know that silver can't go below absolute zero. I know that silver is likely in that relative zero range to bounce back up quite sharply. The longer it sits in that relative zero range, the more likely it is to bounce back up very sharply. Um, so for that reason, it suits my personality, it's tried and tested, but um, I don't I don't suggest this is going to be the right thing for everyone. So um, that is that is my I guess my buying strategy and my trading strategy video. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your own strategies, um, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, develop even better ideas uh, collaborating together. Alrighty, thanks very much, and we'll catch you on the next video. Now, if you like this video and you'd like to see more just like it, why don't you show your support by joining the crew? and we'll explore gold and silver together.